Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to start a new series that's hopefully just going to be two parts, but I'm happy to provide more information if required. And it's on the HTTP um, nodes, which are included within Neos, uh, and how you can use them. This is going to be part one, which is going to be a simple GET request, and then part two will be a POST request, and then if any uh, additional questions come up, there'll be three, four, five, whatever, etc. So let's get started with a GET request. First of all, I need to explain what we mean by a GET request, as that uh, is a, an item of confusion sometimes. So um, a GET request is a type of HTTP um, request, for those who also don't know what HTTP is. Basically, any time you put, say, google.com or facebook.com into your browser, um, you're executing what's called a GET request to Facebook or Google server, and then it responds back with some content, etc. And that's called a HTTP GET, um, and you can do that in Neos. So uh, let's get going. I'm going to hop over here into Smooth POV, and we'll uh, talk about how to do it, and uh, I'll show you some things along the way. So first thing you need is a logic step. So here is a logic step that I've got from earlier. We're going to go ahead and open up the node menu here, and we're going to go to the network tab. Inside the network tab, we're going to need get string here. I'm just going to turn on my private UI for a, a moment that may become clear soon when I talk about it. So you'll be able to see my camera to the left there, just ignore it. And so what get string um, looks very complicated from the outset, but I'm going to go through each one um, with for you. So the top node here on the left is an input, and it's the request. And what this does is it makes the request run. The second input here on the left is a URL. Um, this is where you want to get uh, the data from. This is a gray type, which means you can't um, you can't pull out a display node or an input node by pushing secondary here. You have to do something else, so you have to use that in just a moment. Now on the right here, you have three impulses, which uh, will fire when different events about the request happen. So the top one here is on sent. This is when the request goes out to the server, not when it comes back of any data, just it's sent, it's successfully sent. This second one is on response, which happens when the uh, response is received. The third one here is on error, which is what happens when an error is received. So, when it's sent, when a response is received, and when an error is received. Generically, you want to do response um, handling with the response one, and error handling with the error one. On sent is good to know if your request has even gone through, um, etc. You can trigger sort of loading animations and stuff from the on, um, on sent. Beneath these impulses is the content, which is a string. Now, this is where we start getting into the caveats of the current functionality. I'm sure this will prove in the future, but right now you can only receive strings. You cannot receive JSON, and you cannot pass JSON. So if you're looking to talk to a HTTP API, you need to make sure it responds with strings and only strings. You can pass the strings as though they are JSON. I would not recommend it. Passing JSON is very difficult. Um, some formats which are more suitable are things like CSV or TSV, which means stand for comma separated values and tab separated values, um, respectfully. Uh, but uh, you can also, I have seen other people actually write um, JSON passes, but I, I don't recommend it uh, for new beginners. And then beneath that will is be the will is be yes uh, will be the status code, which is a HTTP status code. So whenever you make a request to a resource, um, it responds back with a code. There are many, many codes, sort of 500, etc. Uh, codes, and they all mean different things. All you need to know for this particular tutorial is that 200 means that everything is okay, and pretty much anything else means you've done something wrong. Uh, if you want to know more about HTTP codes, I'll leave some links in the video description, along with some more links about sort of HTTP in general, what GET means, etc. Uh, for you to take a look at, but there are far too many to go into detail on this particularly simple tutorial. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a GET request to a URL which I own, it's on uh, my web server, and it's just going to respond with a simple message. So let's get going. The first thing that we need to do is get a uh, impulse uh, input for the trigger response of the GET string node. So here we're going to put the tip of my developer tool to, uh, logic step into the uh, request here, hold trigger, or primary, pull out a ribbon and hit secondary, and we'll get pulse, which will allow the request to be made. Now I need to input the URL, and like I said earlier, this is a um, gray type called URL, and it may be unclear, oh, how do I put a URL into that? The way that you do that is you go to input, you go to string, or any type of string, it doesn't have to be an input, you could use a variable or something else like that, a component, whatever you want, and then just plug the output of the string into there, and it will automatically convert for you. So we're going to put the tip of my logics tip into the red here, and drag it to the gray, and you'll see that we get a red to gray converter in the middle there. And that's what we're going to use here, because it converts it to a URL. 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get that URL. So I'm going to put this URL in the video description. It'll be surrounded with, you know, information that lets you know this is exactly the URL. But I've actually typed it off screen. I'm just going to pull that in here because it will save me time typing it. Uh, feel free to freeze the video frame if you want to take a look at the URL and type it manually. But like I said, it'll be on uh, the video description, so you can copy and paste it. It is i.probable.co.uk forward slash tutorials forward slash hello.txt. And that's the left-hand side set up. I'm going to hit pulse now just to illustrate a bug, which some people, not a bug actually, it's not a bug, I must be clear. Some people think it's a bug though. When you hit pulse here, uh, you'll see that this box appears. It says, hey, would you like, um, the world is trying to access this third party host. This is for uh, security reasons. Um, it says here, granting access can allow third party to gather inf personal information such as your IP and geographical location. Um, I promise you, I'm not doing any logging here. I have no idea who you are. I don't probably prime is my image server. It's just, it's um it's just a storage bucket that you throw stuff into so hit allow here or use your own file if you're uh, worried about privacy etc so there you go you'll see here that we had a uh, impulse on the top here, which means the request was sent and we also had an impulse on the bottom here in the actually the middle which means that we got a response we did not get an impulse on the bottom which means there was no error but what you'll notice here is that this output, which you may expect to be the result of the GET request, will always be null for some reason. And this stumps many users, but I say this in every video where it comes up. If you see impulses on the right-hand side of a node and some data, the data is only valid for one update cycle, frame, whatever you want to call it. You need to either use it or lose it, um, as I think Alex from Alaska is saying, and I've probably said many times over the years. Um, so we're going we're gonna to store it. And that's an example of using it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to back on our logics node menu, and we're going to go to variables, and then storage, and then string. And then we're going to double primary to put one into the world. And then we're going to go to back, and we're going to go to back again, and go to actions, and then write. I'm going to spawn that in the world with a double primary as well. Now we're going to connect the on response ribbon to the right, and the content to the pink part of the right. Don't worry that it's pink. Again, it's just going to change straight to the appropriate data type if it can find it. If that doesn't happen, then uh, you're probably using the wrong node, etc. But sometimes it will just happen. My advice is to just try it, especially whenever you see pink. Pink means dummy. You can write anything um, to a dummy thing, and it will just update to uh, the appropriate data type. So now you can see that the right node has changed to a red right string node. And so now all we need to do is, uh, let's get rid of this to make some room, and that is put the output of the right node, this pink um, output here, put the tip of your logics tip in and drag it into the string node here. And then from the string node, put the tip in, hold primary and then secondary, and this will be the output of the string node here. And then we can go ahead and hit pulse again, and you'll see that the message appears. Hello from probableprime.co.uk. And that's all the GET request does, and that's actually all we're going to cover for this tutorial. You've discovered how the GET request node works, how to input data into it, and how to use that data when you get there. In more complex applications where you do some sort of effect, for example, changing the color of the lights, the weather, displaying a score or something like that, there's no need to write the variable until you're done with all your calculations. The data here exists for the entire length of this impulse. So say you do some additions, you do some subtractions, you change the data type, etc., some parsing. You only need to write it to something if you want to keep it right at the end. In some cases, you will write it at the end. And in some cases, you'll just let it go because it, it's done its task. You'll see an example of this in the next part, which we'll be posting, which will be coming up just after this one. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.